Today is the third Sunday after Pentecost. However, it is the feast of Saints Peter and Paul, the Apostles, because it's a June 29th. So therefore, it is not the Mass of the Sunday, but the feast of uh, the Mass of the feast of Saints Peter and Paul. The epistle for this Mass is taken from the epistle, from the Acts of the Apostles. In those days, a Herod the king set hands on certain number of members of the church to persecute them. He killed James, the brother of John, with a sword, and seeing that it pleased the Jews, he proceeded to arrest Peter also during the days of the unleavened bread. After arresting him, he cast him into prison, committing the custody of him to four guards of soldiers, four in each guard, intending to bring him forth to the people after the Passover. So Peter was being kept in the prison, but prayer was being made to God for him by the church without ceasing. Now when Herod was about to bring him forth, that same night Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains, and outside the door sentries guarded the prison. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood beside him, and a light shone in the room. And he struck Peter on the side and woke him, saying, Get up quickly. The chains dropped from his hands. And the angel said to him, Greet thyself, and put on thy sandals. And he did so, and he said to him, Wrap thy cloak about thee, and follow me. And he followed him out, without knowing that what was being done by the angel was real, for he thought he was having a vision. They passed through the first and the second guard, and came to the iron gate that leads into the city. And this opened to them of its own accord. And they went out and passed on through one street, and straight away the angel left him. Then Peter came to himself, and he said, Now I know for certain that the Lord has sent his angel and rescued me from the power of Herod and from all that the Jews, Jewish people were expecting. Please stand for the Gospel. The continuation of the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. At the time, Jesus, having come into the district of Caesarea Philippi, began to ask his disciples, saying, Who do men say the Son of Man is? But they said, Some say John the Baptist, the others Elias, and others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered and said, The word the Christ, the Son of the living God. Then Jesus answered and said, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and the blood has not revealed this to thee, but my Father in heaven. And I say to thee, Thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give you, I will give thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loose, loose in heaven. Then he strictly charged his disciples to tell no one that he was Jesus the Christ. <coughs> Please be seated. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. So today we are celebrating the feast of the Apostles, Saints Peter and Paul, one of the important feasts of the Church. 
it's a first class feast and uh, it is first class in the universal church and um, in a lot of places is it is a day of obligation too so important feasts of the church and you will also notice that there are two things two apostles coming together saint peter and saint paul it is the practice of the church to always celebrate uh, the feast of these saints together to these apostles together uh, mostly today's feast um, more on the side of saint peter but saint paul is also come uh, also um, if not uh, through the through the you know parts of the mass but it is always like that uh, saint uh, um, paul is somehow brought in and it is clear from to tomorrow's mass it's a feast of a commemoration of saint paul saint peter would be commemorated so always these two saints come together in a certain way but anyway that is a liturgical uh, practice of the church now today we will consider this feast um, especially of uh, this uh, apostle this saint saint peter he is called the uh, prince of the apostles the head of the apostles and our lord specifically chose saint peter to do the job to head or to be the head of the apostles and saint peter is unique in many ways and most of the time that apostles uh, the our lord has spent with his apostles uh, you will always find saint peter there most of the time you will find saint peter uh, being there and uh, and uh, mostly answering on the behalf of the apostles not on his personal level um, only but also many times on the behalf of the apostles he will answer uh, to our lord so one such thing that we have today in today's gospel our lord was asking about himself what men uh, think him to be so the answer was no many think that he was the john the baptist others uh, th maybe thought he was uh, um, elias and others uh, jeremiah are one of the other prophets but our lord went on to ask no okay <coughs> what other people uh, think of me that is our own self but what do you think of me looking at the apostles so he is basically asking this question to the apostles what do you what do you think of me and again saint peter on the behalf of the apostles he gives this answer your christ the son of god living Um, son of the living god so there we see the profession of faith of saint peter it is a profession of faith because it is not a human calculation it is not something that he learned through so to speak through human experience uh, for having lived with him for some time now that he found out that he is such a person not like that but more on account of the revelation of god himself that's why our lord would say because other people uh, did look at our lord other men around him uh, did uh, see our lord but they did not you know arrive to the conclusion or they did not uh, come to the knowledge that he is truly the uh, son of the living god where is the apostles especially saint peter he came to this conclusion because it is an it's an inspiration it is a revelation from god himself that is why our lord said it is not the flesh and the blood that has revealed it to you that has taught it to you but it's my father who has revealed it to you so it's important to 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 know that to consider that because it is the same subject that we deal with many of us deal with but not all of us come to the same conclusion so you have another classical example of uh, now what is happening uh, in the society many people see the same thing but not everyone is 
coming to the same conclusion. The every, not everybody is following of the logic of it, logic of the events that, uh, that, uh, that um, came. So many people will try and excuse themselves because they don't want to uh, take up this uh, trouble, take up this cross, take up this uh, difficult situation. But St. Peter, as we saw, he is not one of those. He clearly saw uh, it is inspiration given by God and uh, he see through the things and he made the profession of faith. He was a son of the living God. So, St. Peter is basically a man of faith, but we will also see he, is, he had many other weaknesses. But to begin with, he is a man of faith, and that is why, uh, because of his solid faith, uh, our Lord uh, no, built the church on him and gave this power over, uh, <coughs> over the other members of the church. So, the, so therefore, Saint Peter uh, naturally is a man. Um, he had both you know, strength and weaknesses, like every one of us. We may be good at one thing, but uh, we may be bad at other things, weak at other things. Likewise, you see with Saint Peter, he had that great faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, and he was ready to uh, do anything for Him. But there are moments in which uh, you will see the weaknesses. And that is very clear in the life of St. Peter. He said that he will not deny our Lord. But he did. Three times he, he denied our Lord Jesus Christ. But it's the same person who made the profession of faith before. And uh, sometimes he he is afraid of things, but he is the same person who fought uh, against the soldiers and uh, he, who uh, chipped off the ears of uh, Malchus, trying to defend our Lord. Well, anyway, that is not the kind of defense he wanted. He didn't want to become violent in order to defend uh, our Lord, but at least we can see his, his disposition. He wanted to do something for our Lord. He, didn't, um, he was not indifferent, but he wanted to do something. He did not run away like the uh, rest of the other people. But he wanted to do and fight for our Lord Jesus Christ. And at times his faith was weak. For example, I think it was after his resurrection, I think it was. Like our Lord was walking on the sea, where they were fishing in the boat. Um, and our Lord, they would see our Lord from uh, from distance. And when the Saint John would say it is uh, our Lord, he will immediately uh, you know, jump uh, into the sea and go towards our Lord. Started walking on the sea, over the waves. But when he you know got a little bit of doubt in what he was doing, that he was walking on the sea sort of thing, then he began to <coughs> sink into. So there we see again the weakness of it. However, St. Peter is man, um, mainly of faith, though he had weaknesses and showed of those weaknesses from through his denial, through his doubt and so on. And uh, on him, was built the church. Tu es Petrus, as super hong Petrum, edificabo ecclesia meam, said our Lord in today's gospel. On him was built the church. And this church will never fail. The gates of hell will never, never prevail over the church. But what is happening uh, in our days? It is very discouraging and it uh, seems, it only seems, it is only apparent that church is sinking, church is, be, church is being destroyed. And if, it, uh, if the course of this kind of action continues, uh, 
it may end up dis being destroyed one day completely. That is the naturally, uh, the logically uh, speaking, the thought, uh, that kind of thought should come to us. But still, we have the word of our Lord Jesus Christ. The gate of hell shall never, never prevail. Now, how that is going to happen, we do not know. But we are called forth to defend, to uh, preserve the faith, to defend the faith. Many people don't want to defend because of the difficulties of the life. If you stand for our Lord, you are being ridiculed in many times. You become a, a laughing stock for the others. You become somebody very strange to this world. Well, when you try to defend our Lord, when you try to uh, say the things that our Lord Jesus Christ said, Similar thing, no? When we try to say what the Archbishop Lefebvre used to say and practice, now we are become, so to speak, you know, as they claim it, that we have become sedi Because we are not agreeing to go to Rome, so we are becoming sedi all of a sudden. But they forgot to realize that this was the position the society held for many years. They didn't, they didn't want to go along with the lines of the modern church. But for the, even for the society, many of the society members, it, it has become something new. Oh, why have they taken up this, city, this, this position? That is because they are not ready to continue the fight. In a manner of speaking, you may say they are fed up with this. They don't want to undergo these difficulties. But it is a matter of faith. It is a matter of faith. This is for this faith that apostles laid down their lives. If it is not for that, they could have easily compromised them. Okay, we will get friendly with those you know, Jews, with those, uh, those uh, Pharisees, those, you know, even the, the Roman emperors. We would be okay. If we try and please the Herod a little bit, it should be okay. We can still survive. They could have adopted that kind of um, um, method in order to survive. But that is not what is required from our Lord. Our Lord wants us to preserve the faith. And Paul says, even the angel of heaven comes and preaches you, gives you a different gospel do not accept that. So we cannot change. And Archbishop just gave us that, what he had received. He simply gave it to us. And we have the greater obligation to preserve that faith and pass on the faith to the subsequent generations. We cannot be, you know, short-sighted and selfish that, okay, I had this mass, I had this faith, I have understood the faith, and that is good for me. It doesn't stop there. It has to continue. It has to continue till the end of uh, end of the world, until the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So, in this matter, we cannot be selfish. That I have good place. I have a good uh, um, church or chapel. Everything is worked out. <clears throat> we have settled in a certain manner. In the past, we have fought. We have suffered. We have been you know, chased from place to place and now that we got a place for ourselves we are not going to go and suffer anymore. That is the kind of mentality that we see more and more. Uh, so that, that is actually a weakness that only manifests the weakness of our faith if you go along with that uh, kind of mentality. So, my dear brethren, we have to preserve our faith and for this faith only the Apostles laid down their lives. The Apostles went after uh, the time of our Lord, they went to the ends of the world to preach. As we had in two days ago, I think it was in gradual, it was in, yeah. But, uh, 
somewhere where we had it that the, the sounds resounded, that the voices resounded till the ends of the earth. So we have a greater obligation to continue that, to, to, to listen to this voice, the, the voice of the apostles and to preserve the faith. We cannot change, we cannot change on account of the present difficulties. So let us ask the apostles, Saint Peter and Paul, let us pray for the papacy which is in, 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 a, in a damaging situation in this present world. The papacy, the present pope is not just destroying the church but destroying the papacy itself. Destroying the church by bringing forth a new kind of understanding of the doctrine, new kind of explanation for the practice of the church. Many times he reverses or he changes the traditional practices of the church. He does a new thing, funny thing, all kind of clown masses or you know, masses in the beaches, putting uh, balls on the altar, all sort of things. So he is not uh, preserving that the, the faith was given to the apostles to, as a deposit of faith was given to them uh, to pass on. And the popes are supposed to preserve that, defend that. But rather they are not, first of all, passing on the faith that, that was traditional, but they are inventing new things and also destroying what was good, what was you know, already there in the church. So destruction of the church is happening uh, in front of our eyes. It is not that something happening uh, somewhere that we don't hear about it. We, we see it ourselves. You have seen it yourselves in your local parishes in the past. That, that continues, the destruction of faith continues. And with this new pope, you know, the destruction of papacy itself. So after a time, no, there will be no respect for the papacy. There is no um, honor that will be given to the papacy. He becomes like one, like a president of a, of a nation. He forgets that he is the vicar of Christ. So joining hands with uh, people who lead a scandalous life, a sinful life. So it's, it's heading towards a, a different um, um, kind of thing. It is not the church of uh, our Lord Jesus Christ anymore, at least, uh, as, uh, at least for them. But what we say is it is still the church of Christ, it is still the church of Jesus Christ, but it is being attacked, it is being destroyed, so that we have an obligation to fight for it. At least to preserve it, uh, you know, by in, in our our circles. So let us pray, pray for the present Pope, Pope Francis, uh, that that he may come back to his senses, to to defend the Church, and to defend the papacy. So we should uh, pray to Saint Peter, who was the first Pope. Let's pray to him and let us ask a greater faith, a strong faith, like that of St. Peter. Although St. Peter had a weakness before, but after the coming of the Holy Ghost, he totally was strengthened. Maybe even after the coming of the Holy Ghost, perhaps he was a bit, uh, sometimes acted humanly, we may say. We have that episode of Kovadis. After a while, you know, St. Peter wanted to go back, so he was walking out of Rome. And our Lord appeared to St. Peter, Go this Petre, where do you go, Peter? So, well, after that, St. Peter, you no, know, definitely got that, you know, the strength of the faith, and it went until the, until the situation that he has to lay down his own life. For Christ. So let us ask his intercession, let us pray for the church, pray for the Pope, and remember Our Lady of Fatima asked for this, pray for the Pope. You have to say there are sufficient rosaries for him, for the church in general, for the triumph of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, the 
Singapore should be uh, you know, granted the strength to be able to do the consecration. As the things are now, he is not going to do the consecration. So somehow we have to, through our prayers, through our rosaries, we have to um, ask heaven's grace to change, to influence his mind, to influence his heart, so that he accepts to do this consecration asked by Our Lady, consecration of the uh, of, of Russia to the Immaculate Heart of Mary, along with the uh, bishops, the entire bishops of this world. So let us pray uh, for the church and for the Pope and for ourselves and for our family so that we remain strong in our faith till our, till our end. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.